Now let's dive into some of the principles of effective email design. One of the most important things in email design is text. Regardless of where a person views an email, text is the one thing that gets rendered consistently. It doesn't matter which email client an email is viewed in, what sort of platform it's viewed in, text is the one thing that will always show up. So it's good to pay attention to how you treat text because if all else fails, that's what your email is. Ideally, your email's message should come across without images. So think about your email as a whole and translate that into text. Make the message easy to digest. Pay attention to typography and make your content easy to read. In something like a long form email, nice typography is really important because you're asking people to devote a lot of time to reading your content. It's important to pay attention to your type size, to line heights, and even text color because all of that goes into making the email comfortable to read, especially on smaller displays. Not all fonts are shared across systems. Helvetica is present on a lot of Apple machines, but on Windows, it's actually Arial that's used instead. So it's good practice to build a font stack where you'd specify something like Helvetica and Arial and then fall to sans serif so that your text will always display the way you intend. It's important to stick with ones that are well supported across multiple platforms. Typefaces like Helvetica and Arial and Georgia and Times New Roman will get you very wide coverage across systems and will act as a failsafe in case you're using some fancier fonts that may not be present on some machines. Another option is to use web fonts. Now these are typefaces that you can serve via the web that aren't necessarily present on many user machines. If you do use web fonts, it's important to provide a fallback to system safe fonts so that your text will render how you intend regardless of whether or not the user has access to a specific web font. A great way to learn about where web fonts work is by referring to style campaigns matrix on web font support in email. They've done a lot of the groundwork for you so you know where it'll work and where it won't. I've included the link in the resources so you can refer to it later. When I talk about having a fallback font, I mean specifying it in the CSS you write in your email. So if you're using a web font, say like Open Sans from Google Fonts, you could actually fall back to Helvetica and then Arial and then Sans Serif in your font stack. And in the case that one of those fonts is not present in the system, your email will fall back to the next one that is available. And so your email's text will render how you intend. It's important to check what options you have available for fonts, regardless of email service provider. At MailChimp, we do the work for you by providing a font stack automatically dependent on the font you select as your primary. Another way to handle text in your emails is by using image-based text, which is a great option if you have to stay on brand. It does have some downfalls, however. So if you have to use image-based text, make sure that you provide a plain text fallback in case the image never loads. The most important thing is to always make sure that your message comes across. And if an image doesn't load and it's full of text, the user won't see it. Ultimately, your best option for textual content in emails is regular text. Even if you do use image-based text, it's important to provide a fallback. Another use of image-based text in emails comes in the form of calls to action like buttons. Image-based buttons suffer the same downsides as image-based text, meaning that if the image never loads, a user will never see your call to action. So it's good to actually code buttons out using HTML and CSS. If you're including a button in your email, it's best to code it using HTML. This is also called a bulletproof button. If you're looking for specific ways to build a button, you can refer to templates.mailchimp.com and there's a whole section on calls to action and writing buttons using code. Now all this talk about text may make it seem like images aren't important in email, but that's not true. They're very important. It's just a matter of finding a balance between text and images. Remember, people are visual, so images go a long way to making an email effective. If you're selling a product, it's a great idea to have an image of that product. Images also provide you a great way to add motion to your email in the form of a GIF, not GIF. <laughs> video is a new kid on the block and getting video is easier and easier these days. If you're in marketing, video is a very exciting choice, but it does come with some significant downsides. First, there's the huge data cost involved in video. Any way you slice it, videos are large in size. And so you're incurring a data cost on the recipient. Additionally, videos aren't supported on very many clients. A great alternative to video and email is GIFs. They render in more places, they're generally lower impact as far as data size goes, and they provide the same amount of visual interest. Another big difference between email design and web design is that email design can't be pixel perfect. 
That's because there are tons of email clients that you have to consider, and they all act a little bit differently than one another. I like to call email design the exact science of inexactness. Like Bruce Lee said, be water, my friend. That means you have to design your email so that there's a little bit of give and take from client to client. So that your design isn't perfect from one client to the next, but works as best as it can from one client to the next. And regardless of the rendering differences from client to client, your email will still retain its design fidelity and it will still achieve its purpose, regardless of where it's viewed. Because of the differences between how email clients render styles and the sheer number of email clients that exist, exactness of design just isn't a viable goal. It's better to design with a little bit of flexibility in mind so that your design keeps its fidelity regardless of the email client your email might be viewed in. There are no hard and fast rules for creating visual interest in an email. What might work well for one brand and audience in one version might not be effective in another. But there are hard and fast rules about making an email easy to digest. Concise, comprehensive, well-written copy is very important, and so does optimizing your design to work effectively across multiple clients. 